What's the difference between painting and tinting? How do you build layers when you're painting? And why does toast always land buttered side down? We're gonna answer all these questions today. Well, two of them, that's coming up. One of the things y'all have asked for over the last few episodes is a video on how to paint on leather. Let's be honest, anybody can take a solid color and paint it into a project. You can still get some cool effects like that. In fact, here's a belt that I did for my wife a few years ago. The turquoise that you see in the background is Angela's turquoise. There's no thinner in it. It's straight out of the bottle and just painted into the background. Well, that's essentially coloring with paint. But what if you want to add layers and create depth? How do you do that? Well, that's what we're going to answer today. We're going to get started down that road of developing depth and layers in your projects. Now, for a little bit of perspective on how long this should take, the video that you're gonna be watching of me painting is sped up by 200%, meaning it's going twice as fast as it would in real life. So painting these, these earrings, the keychain, really in real life took about 20 minutes. Let's talk about the difference between painting and tinting. Now, tinting's not an industry term. It's not something you're gonna hear anywhere else that I'm aware of, but I really feel like it clarifies the difference between the two. Painting is where we're taking an opaque paint we're applying it to the project, we're letting it dry, and then we're repeating the process. It's very hard to layer and blend with an opaque paint. Tinting is where we take an opaque paint, we're gonna mix it with thinner until it becomes transparent, and then we're gonna apply it to the canvas. That's gonna give us a tint because it's transparent. This is what's gonna allow us to create those layers and depth because as we go, we're gonna be adding more paint back into that transparent solution, which is gonna give us more opacity, which is gonna build up the depth and the layers. Now that we understand the difference between painting and tinting, we can go ahead and jump in. Now I'm gonna be using a 50-50 mix of Angelus Yellow and Thinner. Uh, Angelus Thinner is called Too Thin. Mixing these together really is not an exact science at all. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the paint next to the thinner and then I'm gonna use my brush to mix them together until we get the consistency and the transparency that we're looking for. When you're using the layering approach, you're really going to notice that the changes are very, very subtle. This is not like painting with a solid color. What we're doing is we're adding a light tint of color to the canvas with each of the layers that we build up. Going slow is one of the keys that you're really going to want to focus on. It allows you to, to notice mistakes before they happen. And if they're starting to happen, you can correct them before they turn into a bigger problem. And one of the things that might throw you off if you're not ready for it, with this layering technique, it's very common for the project to look worse before it looks better. That's unfortunately just the way it works. Trust the process, it will get there. This is a great example right here. You can see that we've essentially created a ugly yellowish brown color not at all what we want the final result to look like. One thing I'll mention is you want to make sure that your antique is fully dry before you start painting. Otherwise, it can mix with the paint. It's really going to muddy up the color that you get. You can antique before you paint. Just depends on the effect that you're going for. If you do paint, then antique, you'll want to seal it. And then after you antique, you're going to have to come back and freshen up those colors. I know it's a little more work, but it can be a really cool effect. And I might show you that in one of the future videos. But for now, just know that we antiqued before we painted.
Now we can start on the second layer. And we want to start working towards a more opaque color, so I've added more Angelus Yellow to the transparent mixture that we've been using. And I'm guessing we're probably at like a 75-25 mix right now, 75 being paint, 25 being thinner. But the reality is you just kind of have to play with it and get a feel for it. As I work in that second layer, I'm starting to work more towards the outer edges. I'm leaving the center that darker color. Once we're finished with the layering, that center is gonna take on more of an orange color. Really quick, if you're finding the videos helpful, do us a favor and click the thumbs up button. That tells us that we're on the right track and that you want us to keep making videos like this. As you work through it, you're going to notice places that need to be brightened up or blended better. That's perfectly normal. It's part of the process. As I'm starting to work in the third layer, we're at a much higher paint to thinner ratio than what we have been before. I'm guessing I'm probably at like a 90% paint to 10% thinner. I've got just enough thinner in there to make sure that the paint flows really well. I'm staying on the edges, a lot less blending. I'm trying to create crisper highlights. Um, you could even add a few of these highlights to the high spots in the center of the petals if you want to. One of the added benefits to using thinner in the paint is that it makes it easier to remove those occasional oopses that happen. A lot of times you can just lift it off or blend it with your finger. A few things to notice real quick as we're working through the process here. First, look at how much more depth the petals have after that brightest layer of highlights were added. We're only three layers in. It really doesn't take much to get the depth in the layers that you're looking for. 
Second, look at the center of the petals now. They are a lot more orange than they were in the beginning. They've lost that yellowish brown color that we had in the beginning. Now I was going for more of a subtle yellow color, but if you want it brighter, just keep working it until you get it to where you want it. Ultimately, you're gonna be working with straight paint that has no thinner in it at all. Now that we got the petals done, we can move on to the flower centers. Now, of course, you could paint the centers of them black. I wanted something more unique, so I went with the metallic bronze from Angelus. Just paint the centers so a solid color. No need for layering or thinning or anything like that this time. Just one or two coats should do it. So here's your bonus tip. When you're trying to paint those tiny little seeds around the flower center, what you want to do is you want to grab your stylus, the ballpoint stylus, dip it into the paint just a little bit, and then touch it to each one of those seeds. Try to touch each seed only one time. You're going to be amazed at how easy and how fast it is to paint those seeds. One thing to be aware of is really easy to smear the paint if you're not aware of where you're resting your hand. So I almost did it right here. Just be careful where you're putting your hand down, otherwise you might end up with a mess. Once you've got the look that you're going for and you're finished painting the project, now's the time to seal it. But here's where you wanna be really, really careful. A lot of the brush on style sealers will lift paint off your project as you're painting or brushing them on. Now that's not really a big deal if we're talking about a solid color that can be easily painted back in and the repair is more or less invisible. But when we're talking about a layering effect that you've built up over time, gradually developed, well, it's almost impossible to recreate that layering effect in such a way that the repair is invisible. And for that reason, I don't use the brush on sealers when I'm, I'm sealing a painted project. I like to use the aerosol ones, and my choice is leather sheen, especially if it's gonna be an outside project um, where water might get on it or something like that. The waxy base in leather sheen locks it in nice and tight. Well, that's gonna be it for this video. I will see you next week. In the meantime, go make something amazing.